Hello, my name is Dervila and I'm from, originally from Wexford. Um, I've been actually living in Germany for the last 30 years and I'm a latecomer to ELT. I've been teaching for the last 12 years and actually just did my master's degree at Manchester Online last year. So I'm really, I'm a newcomer to everything. I've never spoken at a conference before. Um, so far I've enjoyed the conference and I've learned some new words I've never heard of what a DOS was before yesterday, so I'm not a DOS. I'm not an academic manager, I'm a teacher, and I'm really passionate about teaching. Good, so let me just tell you something about my context. First of all, my topic today is learner autonomy in a communicative classroom, mainly because the main um, aims of Germans are to speak the language. Okay, so just my context. I'm an actually, I'm a in-company, um, English teacher and living in Bavaria and I teach uh, mainly adults and they are in many different departments from IT, marketing, finance um, to engineering. I also teach a few apprentices and these are my youngest learners that I have. I also teach at a university and I don't teach students, I teach lecturers and administrative staff. So here I'm teaching just monolingual learners and they're all German speakers, usually very, very small groups between three and 12, on average about six um, um, participants, the level from A2 to C1. Most of them are between a sort of a B1, a B2 level. They have English once a week. So we're talking about a 90 minute session once a week, could be over a period of 20 weeks. It could last for years in some companies. So basically here, a lot of the Germans have been through at school, the grammar translation methodology. And when they come to me, so there's been so much input and now they want to actually output. So they want to speak the language. So this would be a kind of a typical needs analysis. Um, they small talk, negotiations at meetings, conversation topics, business talk, speaking about technical things, telephoning, emails, speaking practice. These are not really clear needs. You know, I have to really find out what, what technical topics for one but could be talking about a transmission and for another student it could be talking about uh, I don't know food technology so you know so I kind of thought so so the message here is clear so the message sorry um, okay doesn't matter the message here is clear they want to talk more so the challenge for me is kind of focusing on speaking activities either meaning focused form focused interesting and engaging speaking topics, speaking activities for different levels. So I kind of thought, how am I going to, how am I going to do this? So I kind of thought if I get the students more involved, but they bring in information into the class, um, this will kind of help us to have more engaging, more interesting conversations. So I decided sort of, okay, so let's kind of promote learner autonomy. So here we have some definitions. Learner autonomy is a capacity for detachment, critical reflection, decision making and independent action. Our learner autonomy is characterized by readiness to take charge of one's own learning in the service of one's needs and purposes. So basically, if we look at the cloud there, we're talking about, you know, that the students set their own goals, that they kind of make the decisions, that they're bringing material into the class that they're sort of getting involved and it's not me sort of bringing in a topic into the class. You know, I, I, especially if a student um, has a meeting, an important meeting the next morning, I can't say, oh, well, today we have to do um, conditionals. You know, I have to react. I have to sort of, sort of get involved and in want to see how I can help this, my student. So here are some sort of hands-on sort of um, ideas. I've always been brought a lot of images into the classroom. So here are some images that some of my students would have brought into the classroom. Um, we have a young boy here, he's with his dog and the girl is climbing. So there is like, of course you could um, ask lots of questions, where, when, what, why, how often. 
Um, so it's kind of endless. It leads to so much unplugged conversation. For example, people have asked, uh, taken photographs of things they'd like to sell. And so we've had sort of, um, sort of selling sales negotiations in class, but it's coming from them. It's, it's just leading in all different di directions. Um, as I teach in Germany, I teach a lot of engineers. And of course, the topic materials is also very important in class. Um, so we would do sort of the properties of materials and, and talk about sort of the different types of materials. And then as a follow-up, I might ask them to bring in their own photos, their own images. So here you can see we have a coffee maker, a bicycle and a stove. So the students would kind of say why it's so important. They love the word thingamabob. They just, just love that. Uh, so they, they all know, they're always talking about their thingamabob if they can't remember the name. Um, so here we have the stove. So they would kind of say, you know, it's sort of made of heat resistant glass, made of ceramics. It would also give them the chance. This conversation would actually lead in all different directions. I think, you know, to different types of heating systems. The bicycle here made of aluminium, they would kind of compare, well, why don't you have one made of carbon? Where are the best cycling routes? So it's all very, very unplugged, but it, the main thing is that the students are bringing in this material into class. Um, <clears throat> also here, this is a student's video. Unfortunately, the format isn't compatible today. It's, uh, so I asked the students to just take a, a video for, you know, their own video doing something or somebody else doing something for, it had to be under 20 seconds. So here we have a student, she's involved in archery. And so this was a great way of sort of eliciting all these words. And in the end, you know, this student is called Angelica and they couldn't, one guy couldn't remember her name. So he always said, refer to her as the bow and arrow student. So it, it was a nice way of sort of, you can, it just also leads in lots of di different directions. It can be asking questions. It can be describing, giving instructions. Great for giving instructions, the rules of games. And so there's many different ways. But the thing is, they brought in their own um, video, their own images into the class. They were involved. It just made the whole thing more authentic. Another idea is... Uh, these, everybody is familiar with these agree and disagree statements. I have a lot of um, advanced courses and they want to have a rant about something. And so I would actually put, you know, put up on the screen um, some agree and disagree statements. For example, um, companies should never outsource their core competencies. Printed newspapers will go the way of the dinosaur. Job security is more important than money. So this would be maybe, uh, it would be uh, a lesson where we might review sort of giving, uh, giving opinions, agreeing, disagreeing. And then I would actually sort of follow it up that I would send the students home and say, next week come in with your own statements. So this has really sort of also led in all different directions. They're bringing in their interests. They have to think about what they're doing, what they want to talk about. So this would be an example. Um, driverless cars will become mainstream in 20 years. Or of course, Bayern Munich is the best football team in the world or in, in Europe. So this is going to cause a lot of conversation in, in Germany. So, you know, I've got a lot of Borussia Dortmund fans. So, so this is really sort of... Um, so, so they're bringing in what they want to talk about. And this is just making it whole, the whole experience more authentic. You could also do it with sort of A2 students, um, like just jumble the sentences and ask the students to unjumble them so dogs are more loyal than cats. And they would maybe be able to just one or two sentences, they agree or disagree. I would then actually follow it up and ask the students to write their own comparative statement. So it would be maybe sort of London is more expensive than Munich or whatever. So it's a nicer way of sort of doing a little bit of 
grammar instead of in kind of um, gap fill sentences. Um, just to sort of finish up, the kind of the message here is just kind of if the students are more involved, it just makes the whole conversation more authentic. Um, for example, students might ha write their own suggestions. Everybody has cards, talk for a minute. So instead of getting, so instead of using my suggestions, the students would actually sort of write their own suggestions. So talk for a minute about your chair, your car, a film you watched recently. This could be done on paper or it could actually be done. Uh, is everybody familiar with the website Linoit? Yeah, it's a kind of a online pin board where you can kind of share all your ideas in the class. The, they have their iPads or their smartphones and they're sort of brainstorming. Okay, so also I, as I teach a lot in companies, I've noticed over the years that a lot of the, the um, business books, a lot of the meeting scenarios, you know, my, my students just can't identify with these business scenarios. So I turn it around and get them to suggest um, what they would actually like to talk about. So in one company, the week before last, the one person wrote, outsourcing our travel management division was a bad decision. So they, this actually happened in their company, so they were able to, you know, talk about it. And the same here, changing that they, to cut costs, they had to, um, to buy at least 25% of the parts from Asian suppliers. So this was, you know, this was a real situation. The message here is just ears and eyes, awareness outside the classroom. Um, you know, the news, bring it into the class, newspapers, you know, images. You've got students going around Dublin, why not take a, a photo of a nice building, bring it into class, talk about the building, whatever. And advertisements, I love advertisements. I was in London just before the Olympics and I had a marketing group and there were so, some fantastic advertisements. There was an advertisement for Cadbury's and they were weightlifting. So I brought this into the marketing group and you know, they had a ball. We just, it just elicited so much conversation and it, it all led to unplugged teaching and that's what a lot of my students want because they say when they meet, when they're at a business, meeting, they have to be spontaneous. So there's no room for all this sort of practice. Okay, um, yeah, and just interviewing. Why not interview the, the secretary at the, at the language school? And so just the idea here is just open up your eyes, get out, bring um, pictures, information into the class and have a good conversation practice. Okay, thank you very much.